welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Month of the Full Moon, here on Reaction and Review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out a movie from 2011. That movie is Evil Bong 3, The Wrath of Bong. Yes, guys, I've decided to go back to the Evil Bong franchise, and really, in all seriousness, I have no fucking clue why. The only thing I know about this movie... Oh, well, there's two things I know about this movie. One, I know that it's set in space, and oftentimes when a franchise that never even dreamt of going into space all of a sudden goes into space, that's when people see it as the point when the franchise just stopped fucking caring. Uh, a whole And a whole lot of really good and very well-known examples of that are things like Leprechaun 4, Jason X, and Hellraiser Bloodlines. Now, I will say, I liked Jason X, and I liked Hellraiser Bloodlines, but see, I also am a fan of Hellraiser and a fan of Friday the, Friday the 13th, so naturally those were probably going to... I was probably going to enjoy those a little bit more. Evil Bong has yet to be entertaining, has yet to be fun... And now it's going into space for reasons. Now, the other thing I know about this movie is that it was originally filmed in 3D. And, and in fact, I actually put the 3D version of the movie on the Amazon wish list. And when the person bought it off the wish list, they must have bought it off of a seller who, instead of sending out the 3D version as 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 advertised, sent out the 2D version. So I don't even get the fun of putting on goofy fucking glasses and watching this thing. I just get to watch it straight up and alone, and apparently I just got a new email. Who gives a shit? Anyway, um, I don't know, guys, if this thing is going to be any good. I have a ton of doubts on this thing being even the slightest bit good, but the only way I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Evil Bong 3, The Wrath of Bong. Well, guys, I can definitely tell you this much. The writing is still as bad as it was in the previous films, so at least those who were fans of the first two are probably going to really get into this. I was hoping that for the third film they would have finally, you know, learned what the fuck quality is, but apparently that's asking a little bit too much, now is it? You know, guys, it's actually kind of sad that the closest thing we've come to a likable character is our evil alien... alien bong. Really is kind of sad that our film's villain is the closest thing we have to a likable character, but then again, that's because... Every other character is coming back from the previous two films. And I hated everybody in the previous two fucking films. I would have been much happier if this thing would have given us like a whole new cast to fight a whole new Bong. But instead, all we have is the whole new Bong and the same irritating characters we've had to deal with two times B, B before. I sense that the next hour is going to suck, and it's going to suck a lot. You know, guys, you would think by the time we got to the third movie in this series, we would have learned how to do proper fucking puppeteering on this stupid bong. Or hell, on any of the bongs. But no, they haven't. The puppeteering in this thing is as terrible now as it was in the first evil bong. Where it basically is just the mouth is moving, but there's literally no attempt to get it to match. It looks terrible. It looks cheap. It probably wouldn't be as noticeable if the writing in this thing was even half good. But it's not. This movie is fucking garbage. And because of that, I'm noticing every single flaw and failing the thing has more and more. God, why won't this son of a bitch just end? You guys remember at the start of this video I said that this movie was made in 3D? And I put the 3D version on the wish list. Now I'm kind of happy that I didn't get the 3D version, because after seeing this movie and seeing every single ham-fisted, overdone, overly forced 3D, like 3D, you know, effects put in, uh, I'm kind of happy I'm not watching it in 3D, because that would be absolutely obnoxious as fuck, and it would just make this movie just that much worse. And the movie ends with a tease for Evil Bong 4. Evil Bong versus the Killa Crack Pipe. Jesus. Fuck. No. No. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. I'm sick and tired of your shitty stoner, stoner music to you, piece of shit. Oh, good. 
Evil Bong 4. Why? Fucking hell. Alright, anyway. Anyway. We're not here to talk about the potential horrors of an Evil Bong 4. Let's just touch on this one first. Oh, Jesus Christ. Alright, well, um... <laughs> writing. Uh, well, if you can see this as a positive... The writing is pretty much unchanged from the previous two films. In fact, this thing feels a lot like a retread of the first movie. Because second movie, at least they went to at least they went to a new place, you know, and the bong was a, a, a much larger larger threat. This one we have an alien bong whose powers are 100% identical to the original evil, evil bong, as in, you smoke from it, it then sucks you into this parallel world. Actually, in this case, uh, you smoke from the evil bong, it then, like, shoots you down like a wormhole to its own little weed, weed planet. Uh, and then the guys have to try to fight in order to, in, in order to beat it, and then come back to Earth. We totally see how they beat the alien bong, but I don't remember them ever explaining how the fuck they, they, they got back to Earth and how they cleared all the a alien alien pot fucking growth that was in their head shop. And, you know, just a lot of shit was not properly explained, uh, which is fine because this movie is trying to cater to stoners and stoners probably are not going to give a fuck about things like plot and writing. Um, oh my god. Uh... <laughs> However, though, if you try to go into this thing sober, like me, uh, you're going to absolutely detest this thing. It's trying to be a sci-fi horror comedy. Uh, the the sci-fi angle is the fact that the bong is the fact that the bong is from space. It take it when you smoke from it, it takes you to an alien world, thus taking you technically into space. But beyond that, there's nothing here that makes it a sci-fi film. Uh, what, what makes it a horror movie is, well, it is about an evil bong trying to take over the world. I mean, that's kind of like a typical, well, I can't, well, it's a typical B, B, like B movie style horror plot, which I guess makes sense considering the fact that the film is from Full Moon Features, but d god damn it, man, Full, fucking Full Moon has done better than this. Full Moon did Puppet Master. Full Moon did Trancers. For fuck's sake, Charles fucking Band has worked on better shit than this, yet his name is all over it, as was with the f previous two films in the series. Charles Band's name is all over the goddamn things. Charles, what the hell happened to you, man? No, no, seriously, seriously, because Puppet Master was great, and Doll Man was awesome. At least the first Trancers so far has been, a, I mean, it has, has been great. I still have to watch the sequels. Uh, you know, but then you work on shit like Evil Bong and Demonic Toys and what the hell, dude? Anyway, anyway, that's me flying way off topic. Uh, writing. Our characters are completely unchanged since the previous films. Uh, the only thing that even references the fact that the second movie is even a thing is that people will not stop talking about the shit they did in South America. Uh... Which, which I guess is like the one difference between this thing and the first film, is the first film didn't have a previous movie they could continue to harp on, you know. This thing here is basically nothing but callbacks to the previous film, while, 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 while retreading the plot from the first film, and it's not a fun experience. Oh boy, um, is there any, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's any positive in terms of writing. Are there any are are there any likable characters? Well, our new well our well our well our new alien bong is certainly sort of likable. At least that actually is because he absolutely hates every single person who dare who dares fucking put their put their put their lips to his fucking bong hole. Yeah, uh, he just he just has no fucking will to deal with any of these fucking people and he's only letting them smoke from him because it's the only way to get them into his weed planet hive you know mind which will then cause the two planets to merge or some such stupid shit um beyond that no there there are no other likable characters but that's because every other character in this film is coming back from the previous two films most of them coming back from the last one and None of those characters were interesting then. They've actually become a little bit more irritating now. 
Um, part of that may have to do with the acting. I'm going to jump from writing to acting because there's only so many ways I can say that the writing was shallow and shit without sounding like a fucking broken goddamn record. Um, let's talk about our actors. Uh, again, it's all the same actors from the previous films. You would think that between then and now they would have learned how to act at least a little bit or at least learned to act a little bit better. They could have done a bit more with these characters. They could have tried to flesh out their characters a bit more by actually putting a little bit of personal... putting a bit of personality, a little bit of extra flair into these characters. But their personalities are completely unchanged from the first film. The closest thing we have is um, one of them who was just basically like the standard... Who, who was just the standard guy amongst the group has now turned into a he has now turned into a conspiracy nut and a wannabe ninja. That's literally as that that is literally as close as we get to any kind of character you know depth. Otherwise, it is still the nerd, the jock, the stoner, and I guess now we can just call him our resident our resident shitbag ninja. Uh, are now fighting against an alien bong instead of an evil bong. Oh, and they need help from the evil bong, too. Why? Well, that is never fully, fully explained. Um, <clears throat> and then we have characters who were, who were brought up in the second film, and they, and they all, and they all come back. The actors there are making absolutely no effort to give these characters any kind of personality or life. Uh, really, guys, our our actors were here for one reason and one reason only, and that was to cash a fucking check. And they're really, and if that really is your one and only motivation to be in a movie, then perhaps maybe you shouldn't be in the goddamn movie. At least that is how I see it. So acting here. Acting here is terrible, however, I'm going to give the acting a pass because the acting is unchanged from the previous two films, and when you're working on a series, at least, as, as long as you keep to some sort of fucking status, fucking quo, at least, at least I can give you a pass then, you know, but it still, it still doesn't help the fact that your movie is crap still. It's, oh boy. So, I've talked about writing, talked about acting. Special effects. Special effects. Now, as I stated, Evil, Evil Bong 3 was originally released in 3D. In fact, the title sequence on the 2D version still claims that it's a 3D movie. So, yeah. Uh, and you can totally tell that they went to some of the most obnoxious lengths to make the fucking thing 3D. Uh, you can tell because when, well, well, first of all, when you are teleported from Earth to Bong fucking world, or whatever the hell the alien Bong's world wants to call itself, you're taken through this, you're taken through this, like, wormhole that goes from the top of the alien Bong all the way down to his green-tinted version of Earth, and the wormhole has all of these ripples around the outside, which you can tell were supposed to look all cool and trippy and awesome in, you know, 3D. Uh, the previous films had used had used uh, like Batman like 1960s Batman style transitions from scene to scene. Uh, they now have more things like floating like floating around and popping out at you, which again was probably meant to be, which is which is probably meant to be all trippy and shit in 3D. Uh, we also had things at least on Bong World, we had this shit, like, hanging from fishing line. In a lot of the shots, you can clearly see the fishing line, even though, even though everything is lit, is fucking lit, is fucking lit for shit, because they had to have the black lights around, you can still see the fishing line that's dangling these giant rocks just, like, everywhere. And the rocks are all in, like, different positions and places where you can tell that all of that was supposed to pop out in 3D. Certain things, certain things will have this weird, weird form of motion of motion blur, which was probably, again, supposed to look real cool and real flashy in 3D, and it looks really shit when you're watching it in 2D, and it's, and it really does come off as the kind of thing that would probably have been painfully, painfully obnoxious in 3D, so I'm going to count it as a blessing that I didn't get the 3D version of this movie, or else I'd have even more shit to bitch about, um, but hey, I just talked about lighting. I'm going to get to lighting in a minute. I, I still have to talk about the rest of the special effects because I'm just talking about all of the 3D shit that they put in. Uh, oh, and also the uh, Alien Bong's smoke is also digital, with them, and that looks really terrible in the first place. It's really poorly done digital, you know, smoke. But it was probably also supposed to look, again, like a big, you know, like 3D effect when, you know, show, when shown in 3D. Um, 
so beyond that, we also have our blacklight effects, which basically are that the women, the women on Bong World are just actresses who are covered in blacklight paint. So the scenes have to be shot completely with completely with black light, which makes everything look terrible in the first place. I have I have a tip for you guys. If you're going to film a movie, probably not the best thing to film entire scenes in black light. It looks terrible. And it's really done specifically so we have these women who are glowing blue or red or green, or I think the other one's supposed to be like a shade of orange or pink. Uh... It just looks awful. And, of course, not only do they have their whole body covered in this body paint, they also then have, like, patterns, like, painted on the arms in different colors, and it's all supposed to look really cool. And, again, it's supposed to look, like, really cool and really trippy. And I've seen it done many times be before in film. In fact, uh, in fact, I know that Troma has a short film which uses that very same effect. Um... And it was used as a bonus feature on, like, half of their fucking DVDs. And even that short looked awful. Because, again, you can't shoot entire scenes in blacklight without it looking like shit. Now, barring all of the... Now, barring all of the, like... Now, barring all of the, like, blacklight bullshit, the only other thing we really have are our two bongs. And that involves puppeteering. Our evil bong from the first film. They have not made any any effort to fix that puppet and make it look better. They have made no effort to make the puppeteering look better. In fact, it actually has gotten worse because they have now begun putting the camera in just such a way so that way you can actually see the motors on the inside of the puppet as the mouth is moving. So you will have the puppet's mouth here. You'll have the camera pointed downwards like this. So every time that that mouth moves, you can see the fucking mechanism inside, which makes the whole thing look even cheaper. And it's made worse by the fact that the mouth, that the fucking mouth movements are making zero effort to match what is being said. And that is both on, and that, and that is, and that is both on the evil bong and on the alien bong. And the alien bong is a slightly more classical, like rubber, like rubber, like rubber style puppet. And even then, it still looks like shit. To, and also then, to top it off, the alien bong is lit. It is lit from the inside with, like, maybe a dozen little tiny light bulbs, and it looks fucking terrible. Just everything here looks cheap. It looks shitty. And I, guys, am talking cheap even even knowing the budget that this thing probably had going in. I understand that, I, I understand that Full Moon is not known for pumping massive budgets into movies, but... Usually, guys, even when working with a smaller budget, their movies look better than this. The props look better than this. If you guys want to know exactly how bad, exactly how bad that alien fucking bong looks, they actually make it a plot point that everybody says it looks like a shitty film, film, film prop. Guess what, guys? When you have, when you yourself in your own movie have to openly admit that your prop is a pile of shit. I think maybe you should have taken another pass at making that goddamn prop and tried to make it look just just a touch better. Just saying, it would probably have made your, your movie a bit better. It would also have helped if, since they had to use multiple versions of the Alien Bong, if they all looked the same. The one thing that constantly seems to change is the horns on the bong. I'm going to tell you guys right now, there are certain shots where the, where the, where the, because the alien bong, as you can see on the cover here, it has these like horns along along the sides. In certain cases, the horns almost seem to like crisscross behind the fucking like tube. Other times, the horns are jutting straight out, and then there's the classic curved look. Um, the very fact that it will change from shot to shot as they are doing different scenes, and then the bong's horns are changing literally from shot to shot in the same goddamn scene makes the whole thing look just that much worse. Okay, so I've talked about so I've talked about you know, writing, acting, special effects. I've even touched on lighting a touch since everything on fucking bong on fucking bong world is shot is shot in black light and looks terrible, but what about the rest of the lighting? The rest of the lighting is fine. Uh, our sets look terribly cheap, but but also once more that is a that is a normal thing for this series, so I'm I'm going to let that slide. Our soundtrack is the same batch of god awful, terrible stoner fucking songs that that were in the previous films. Again, I'm going to kind of let that slide. It would have been nice if we'd have gotten a whole new soundtrack. 
the only song I thought even sounded halfway decent was a song that played over the opening credits, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the same song that's played over the opening credits of all three films. It's a song called, well, I'm going to assume the song is called Wicked, it is probably called Wicked, you know, Weed. I'm not totally sure. It's probably the closest thing this movie has to, to an interesting song. Everything else on the soundtrack sounds terrible. Everything else in the score sounds hideous. Guys, when all is said and done, I'm able to recommend Evil, Evil Bong 3, The Wrath of Bong. Uh, no, I personally cannot. The only way I could ever recommend this this terrible thing is if you yourself are a fan of the previous two films. If you are a fan of the previous two evil bong movies, then this thing is just more of it's just more of the same and you're going to have a whole lot of fun with that. However, if you hated the previous films, if you hated them as much as I fucking hated them, then this thing here is going to be a is going to be a waste of time. Believe me, I'm feeling I'm feeling more and more re I'm feeling more and more regretful that I put this goddamn thing on the fucking wish list but guess what the good news is the movie the movie is done and now i never have to watch it again and before anyone asks no i'm probably never going to watch evil evil bong versus the kill a crack you know pipe no that no no fuck no they can barely do puppeteering on bongs why the hell would i want to see them attempt to attempt to attempt to puppeteer a crack pipe that just sounds fucking terrible. No, guys, I cannot recommend this again, unless you're a fan of the previous films in the series, at which point, by all means, go right ahead. You're probably going to absolutely love this. Me? No. Now, Evil Bong 3, The Wrath of Bong, came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is one of, is one of my most common contributors, and that is Robert. Robert, I do thank you, dude, for this movie. If you guys could please swing on over to Robert's Amazon profile, go check out everything that he has up there. Um, again, dude, I thank you. I kind of had hopes that this thing, being a slightly more sci-fi, sci-fi-ish version of Evil, of Evil Bong, I had these hopes that it would be a little bit better, and unfortunately, it wasn't. It was terrible. It was poorly written. It was poorly lit, at least in the fucking Bong fucking world scenes. Our puppeteering is still shit. I wouldn't have known any of that, though, dude, if you hadn't have sent it in. And for that, I thank you once more. Please, guys, swing on over to Robert's Amazon profile. Check out everything that he has. As for me, well... You know, I mentioned earlier about the other things that Charles, that Charles Band has worked on, and I mentioned Puppet Master. I still have every Puppet Master film here. I think I'm going to go and marathon a few of those and be, and, and be happily reminded of when Charles Band actually knew how to make good fucking movies. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.